I think there were three things that I found really surprising. Um, the first was my attitude to Ruprecht it, my, itself changed. You know, I, I thought one of the reasons this might be an interesting book to write would be because he kind of stood for a whole generation of aristocrats and royalty in, in Central Europe that get washed over by the forces of modernity and are unable to adapt and keep up uh, and, and get sort of made a footnote to history, uh, effectively. Um, but actually, as time went on, I realized that in many cases, the decisions that, that he and those people uh, had made had contributed to their own downfall and, and therefore, um, in a sense, they were, they were much more responsible for their own destinies than I had perhaps assumed. They weren't as powerless um, all the time uh, as I had kind of thought. So that's the first thing. The second thing, I think, is the, I was surprised by the attitude to, the German attitude to the British a little bit in two ways. First of all, politically, it comes through very strongly in Ruprecht's writings, his diaries and letters, that he sees the British as being the political glue that holds the whole alliance against Germany together. <clears throat> uh, that she's really the, the evil genius, if you like, behind the war from the German perspective. Uh, and I was surprised by that. And the second side of this is that the it is kind of the opposite of that, is that militarily, as far as the British Army is concerned, I mean, not so much the Royal Navy, but so far as the British Army was concerned, how little attention they paid to all the things that mil British military historians tend to obsess about when they're looking at the First World War. It just wasn't that important for the Germans. You know, there were more Frenchmen, and they were better at their job, so far as they were concerned. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the third thing is that I was surprised by quite how poor the German army was and how internally divided it was and how poor the decision-making processes were. Um, I think the, the perception that many of us have of the German army in the first 50 years of the 20th century, uh, anyway, is that you know, kind of regardless of its, the, the, the political objectives to which it was put, which are clearly abhorrent, that actually as a technical machine, it was very efficient and very effective and you know, man for man, perhaps better than the British, French or American armies that, that it ends up fighting, or, or perhaps the Soviets for that matter as well. But that doesn't seem to be the case. The British army, sorry, the German army seems to be suffering from all the same problems in exactly the same ways as the British and the French are struggling with. And, and they're equally poor at coming up with solutions. So I suppose in a sense, what I've ended up, ended up feeling is that the war was, this was not a war that was won by any stroke of genius or even by any combination of, of clever decisions put together. It was, as many wars are, decided by the, those who made the fewest mistakes.